let's get you guys back. Let's get some questions. Any questions, thoughts? Just firstly, does that give processing? Is that more lucid about what processing is? Does that make a lot clearer for you guys to explain for your clients as well? For those that done the ACH demos with me or even done it with the other students, is that a pretty cool representation of what you've experienced as well? It's like, fuck, I didn't know that was going to come out. Like, oh my God, I never used to eat that food before, but this pickles and relish with yogurt on top is incredible. Where has this been my whole life? But they were too busy looking for the bowl of ice cream, as an example. Does that make sense? Um, now, the only way this backfires, again, is when a client goes looking for something that they want instead of something they could get. Big difference. So when you have your processing chat with your client, you have to open their mind up to possibilities. Can everyone see the value of that? Okay, that's what we're going for. Is there any questions? We'll go to the worksheet soon. We've got, actually got through that fairly quickly. Any questions on that? Thoughts? Again, I'll give you a copy of those slides as well. Who liked the look of that suit? Wasn't that cool? I wouldn't wear it, but it might be that suit that changes your whole life. You never know. It might be you wear that suit down to the pub and find the love of your life. Who knows? Instead of just being, oh, I'm a non-smoker. Thank you. I think I overpaid because I could have gone to another therapist for 50 bucks. Okay. Any questions, guys? Great use of metaphors. Yeah. Please steal them. I used to use the suit one a lot because it made sense for the lawyers. Any questions? Come on, my presentation wasn't that good. It's got to be questions. Henning, go for it. So assuming that we've done the testing to really like a point where they're like, well, dude, I just need to get out of, of yeah. this call now. Mm -hmm. um, how successful is it then to say like, well, all right, like now what's going to happen from here and here are my slides? Like how much attention never, and effect will it have? Yeah, I never did the whole presentation. I only thought of that. I thought it was a good idea when I was putting this presentation together. Had I realized it back then, I probably would have used it just like the future value deck. But when you've said the processing chat thousands of time, you can pretty much knock it off in 30 seconds. So a client says, Henning, let me go like far out. I'm sick of this. Go, okay, just where you go, this is what to expect. Put a big smile on your face, get excited. Tell a client, don't go looking for something. Just wait for something incredible to happen. Get really animated with it because what this almost becomes a suggestion, even though we hate suggestions, you're priming them for success. It's like, I don't have kids, but you know, let's say their birthday is in a couple of days. You get them excited about it. You prime them for all this incredible fun stuff that's going to happen and they get excited. So when their birthday comes, it's better than they thought because they're excited. There's a state change. Same thing here. Okay, cool. That, does that make sense? And again, I'll give you guys the context of Ericsson. I couldn't imagine him doing the processing chain, getting excited. Um, but I know for a fact, my mentor used to do it too. The client would sit there and go like, man, I don't even know what's up. I don't know what's down. What the hell did this Sarah girl say to me? They're so lost in this thought. And then Erickson would just go, okay, enjoy your life. Why would he do that? What has he basically said? I guess he didn't want to interrupt the processing. Yeah, he's just set it up. What's the point of touching it if he just planted the plant? It's got to grow. He set up the processing like where he just basically gets in their brain and stirs it up. Why would he need to touch it anymore? Now, I like to just add that processing thing at the end. My mentor used to do it to an extent. Sometimes he wouldn't. But I like the idea of just getting a client excited because I know the value of priming at the end because they're already suggestible. Okay, and again, that's how you can speed up that processing. But Ericsson didn't care about length of time. He didn't care if it took three years because he knows once that three years is up, the person he met three years ago is not going to be the same person three years later. And he's confident enough to know that, okay, I've opened up the door. That's, that's my job done. Don't close the door on them. Don't tell them, hey, go through that door and go find what I want you to find. Go hug your inner child because now you're telling them what to do. Okay, let them just explore. Let them try the suit on. Does that make sense, guys? Uh, Stephanie, go for 